All right, the Colorado Avalanche score six on eventual Vesna Trophy winner Connor Hellebuck, but they gave up seven and lose game one of their first round Stanley Cup playoff game. Let's talk about it. Lots to get to here. New episode of Locked on Avalanche coming at you. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli. With me as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thanks for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. Make sure you're following us on social media outlets, LOP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter X, Locked On Avalanche and Instagram and Threads. Questions, comments, concerns, and opinions, locked on avalanche at gmail.com and follow us on our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live, and subscribe to our subtext as well. Link to that's in the show notes below. And when you do chat with Kyle and I one on one, get your opinion on everything avalanche related, including this game, this series, which we share on this very podcast. Uh, all right, sir. Game one in the books. There's a lot to like um and there's one glaring thing to dislike and we're gonna talk about it all and like i said like you put up six goals um on connor hellebuck you do that at any point in the season and that's good you put up six goal goals on on anyone and and you expect to win that game and i mean we're just gonna jump right into it now like the, the, the alexander georgiev problems continue and they continue going into the playoffs i'll get your take on it and then obviously we have a lot to say on all of this congratulations avalanche fans we flipped the switch we are in playoff mode and your gift is going south it is not 696 save percentage in this game this is about as abysmal as you can get and i I can't wait for the 30 for 30 on this season to find out what uh, eye drops he put in Juice's food to give him food poisoning <laughs> where he was sick, where he would have to get the start in this game. It was it was not great, but it's honestly, if this is going to if this is going to be the rhyme and reason of the series, the Avalanche have a a lot of decisions to make is around your gift and how do you play as a team? Uh, I, I think if, if Anunin was even there, which he was not the backup for people who maybe were not paying attention, he, he did not uh, he didn't come in because he was not the backup. But apparently he was sick with something and they called up their AHL guy who I, I don't know anything about him. So he was not going to play. You know, this was all Georgiev. Um, and I would say even if Anunin was there, he wouldn't have played this game anyway because. He's probably playing game two. So why bring him in? Uh, I, you know, I, as I'm saying that out loud, well, maybe you do to stop the bleeding because you are scoring. You are scoring. So maybe you do bring him in in this game and see what he does. And if he he stops shots, then obviously he's your 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 goalie for, for game number two. Um, because it didn't get so much out of hand where the Avs were not in the game. If that was the case, if it was, you know, six to nothing, or even five to nothing, then if Anunin was available, then maybe you bring him in. Or again, the thinking might be just let him sit because we know we're going to play him in game two, so make him as healthy as possible. But I'll say this, Kyle, my, my, and, and, and for people who listen, I was where the avalanche went of starting your giving in game one. And, and I said it multiple times, like he's got a short leash. That leash changed when Anunin was not there, obviously. But um, I, I was of the mind of let it, let him see let him see if he can be that guy who steps it up in the playoffs, whose game gets raised because it's the playoffs. That's enough to see that it's not. And, you know, if, if you had given up four, um, it, it may, maybe even a five and one, six to five, you can kind of you can kind of spin that and twist it to say like, well, he won us the game. He didn't give up uh, as many goals as they did, but you get you gave up that many in in your first game. Uh, I I, th I this has got to be it. I I can I can't think of a reason 
unless unless Anunen is still not health is still not well in game two. I think that's the only way Georgiev gets out there for a second game. And then if Anunen does the same thing, then whatever, then it doesn't really matter, and you just try to outscore him. There's two things with the Georgiev situation. One, Avalanche fans with your Georgiev jerseys, check your receipts, see if you can return it, because I, <laughs> I doubt you're going to see that 40 next year. <clears throat> two, this goes back to, in quote-unquote garbage time for the Avalanche, boy, home ice would have been wonderful in game one. Could you imagine? Would it have mattered? Well, it, that... I mean, because this playing so it, bad. It doesn't matter where what, what arena he's playing in. He can't stop a shot. Well, this game was bookended. It was three in the first, three in the second for both teams. The second period was the differentiation. There was one goal in the second for Winnipeg. But having that ball arena crowd, a little bit extra push, uh, I think that would have helped. That man. that I'm Winnipeg, not there, man. I'm not there. Yeah, go ahead. No, the Winnipeg, that Winnipeg crowd definitely didn't help. And having the the crowd chanting "pull your goalie," like we talked about national broadcast picking up on the Orgiev situation. Now opposing fan bases are using it as chant ammo. And for a goalie that you're literally watching break, you wanted, because when it came to defending why your gift should get the start, let's see what he can do in this situation. Let's see what he can, he's got to fix this. He's got to make up for this. We've run out of scenarios on why it's justified that he should start. So now that a playoff start at home, I mean, you're looking for anything now because we have literally exhausted every excuse, every scenario mm -hmm. for why your gift should be back there. And the last thing is, let's see how he does at home. But I mean, good grief, a six ninety six. I and I get, I get the Avs made some sloppy turnovers, some bad passes. They didn't help him out on a couple, but seven goals in the playoffs. Like, and and I mean, the reason why I'm not going with the the home ice advantage thing is like, you basically had that well, a week ago when you when when Winnipeg came to town, and that was a huge. That was essentially a playoff game. And and look what happened. So I, I'm I'm I have I have I guess backed him and and not made excuses for him, but kind of rode him for the full duration of the season up until now. And and, and some people like their breaking point is when the calendar changes. You know what I mean? And so, some people the breaking point is is the All Star break. Um, I, I, I oh, yeah right no and I get that. Mine's I, I give guys like more lead, especially with how they were playing. Like they're still up in the standings. Um, mine is now, and maybe that's a little bit late to the game, but it, 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 I just think, you know, you didn't have Frankie there. If Frankie was there, it would have been a different situation. So just the way that it worked out for the avalanche, what you're, what are you going to do? Like you, you were just playing musical chairs with your backup for the entirety of the season. Annan's kind of, you know, finished off the season well enough to to kind of stake claim to that now you're turning to him i think you have to you ha you cannot do this again you put up six on them you put up six on connor hellebuck you might not do that the rest of the series so you have to play like you you might not because he's not going to be happy with that you think that, that that connor hellebuck put up six and one is he's happy he's not happy so if if you you know if, if you want to win this, like you need to stop them from scoring goals because they are going to do the same to you. And he's not your best option right now. He's just not. I, I don't I don't know if this is is you know, could this be the last time we've we've seen uses uh, excuse me, uh, Alexander Georgiev like start a game for the avalanche? Remains to be seen. But he's just not he's not doing it for you. Plain and simple, and he hasn't for you know right up until the end of the season is is where it just got the worst for him, and that is clearly carried over. He can't do like they're sure like th they got off to a really good start. Mm -hmm. Habs got off to a really good start. They were the enforcers, and for the duration of this game, they were really in command of what's you know outside of the goalie position. They really were. And you feel really good about that aspect, but man, like it, when 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 they when when Winnipeg gets into a, or any team, but you know they're playing Winnipeg, so let's talk about Winnipeg. When they get into a, a, a position where they have a, a clear line of sight for a shot on goal, it's going in. 
you have zero confidence that this guy can stop even the most basic shot right now. And I don't want to hear like when they when 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 they they had four goals. Oh, he shut the door for a little while. Don't get to four. Don't get to four and then <laughs> turn it on. That's not and, what you need. And and that first period, the Avalanche had such a grueling forecheck, and the defense was really playing well. And the momentum was clearly with Colorado in Winnipeg and a crazy environment like you you liked the avalanche pressure but then in the back of your mind avalanche fans all throughout the season you're counting saves you're like oh he's got one so it's not <laughs> one shot one goal oh that's two. Oh my goodness this is great you got three the avalanche were out shooting the jets astronomical at first and you're you're sitting there and you never felt comfortable you're like oh that's just three that's just and you can't sit there and you know the aval the, the the defense is doing the same thing you could play a flawless forecheck, a really good defense, which has been suspect up until this point. Like, Kale McCarr walked away with three points. Like, this is a, a really good defensive outing, both offensive, defensive, and defensive. And for you to put up that effort, and then your goalie's just letting you down. Because then a 7-6 game, we could go back and play, what's your favorite bad goal? Like, it's the best yeah. of the worst. What goal could we have? prevented where you could have at least tied it sent it to overtime maybe got the win changed momentum you have a plethora of goals that you could pick from that your gift lets up where whether it's he passes you and breaks you like they could pass all the way around the slot and take a shot it's in on your gift straight on it's just over his glove he misses it he does his little dip of the head the slap of the stick reset and let's see what he does wrong the next time it, it doesn't matter he's getting beat every way it's one of those things where you we've said it so many times like you need a save you know we're, we're a couple of them not fully on him sure maybe two of them there was a, a bad turnover uh in in the abs defensive zone uh i think it's when the nemetsnikov had he just happened to be right there and he takes his like wicked slap shot like avalanche legend there, plus love yeah, exactly. um but sure okay like that that that's a that's a nice that's a nice goal. I don't want to, but again, you want a goalie that can can come up and and bail you out every once in a while, and he's just not doing it. So I mean, at the end of the first, like you said, three to three to three after the first, Avs three goals on fourteen shots. Winnipeg, uh, three goals on eight shots, and then four goals on ten shots. You just can't have that. You just no. cannot have that. And and kind of another reason why it's so frustrating is some of these other stats, which uh, I will get to. Let's take our first break. We come back. Obviously, more to talk about with Game One of the Avalanche and Winnipeg. All right, let's hear from FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game right now. New customers get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 50 bucks. Win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. America's number one sports book. That is, of course, FanDuel. And we are also brought to you by Policy Genius. It's the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help you uh, walk through it and talk to a team of award-winning agents who will walk you through the process step-by-step step. because your life insurance policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs. Even worse, it may not come with you if you leave your job. Policy Genius gives you unbiased advice from a licensed expert support team. So check life insurance off your to-do list. In no time with Policy Genius, head to policygenius.com slash locked on NHL or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That is policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. 
All right, I want to get to some of the uh, the stats that I, I I like. Sometimes like the you know, these metric stats and stuff don't really like mean a ton, and most of the time the teams are pretty close to one another, and it's just duking it out on the ice, and and and, and you know some puck luck going one way or the other is kind of like what wins it for games. You look at these, and, and so much of this favors the Avalanche. Mm-hmm. So much of it. So you you do you feel good in some aspects of this game. Let's not kid ourselves. Like the, the, what, what leaves the worst taste in our mouths is, is the seven goals and Georgiev play. Um, but offensively, Avs looked very good. You look at the – this is ridiculous. Like this is just where like stuff is nuts. The expected goals for this game. Remember, it was a seven to six game. Expected goals for the Avs, 4.83. Expected goals for Winnipeg, 2.16, Kyle. Just over two goals they were expected to have based on everything going up, based on shots. And there, there's so much that goes into expected goals. Um, where it came on the ice, if it was an odd man rush, like it, it, it's ridiculous where this stuff comes from. But the expected goals for them was two, and you gave up seven. And on the flip side for them, like it was f- almost five, and Avs got six. It's a little bit more in line for what the Avalanche had. Um, you look at this is over a natural stat trick. So shots, Corsi um, shots, and again that is all shots towards the net. Whether on, they're on goal, they get missed, they get blocked. It's all shots directed towards the net. Uh, Corsi four for the Jets, forty-eight. Corsi for the Avalanche, eighty-eight. Forty more shots directed towards the net. So this defensive team that is is like the best defensive team in the league let up 88 shots directed towards their goalie. You want like that's the stuff that needs to continue, clearly. And then <clears throat> to when it goes to the offense, you out hit this quote unquote defensive team. You were the more physical presence. You were yes. and you walked away wow. from this game. You you want to talk about a, a wasted effort? A perfect power play. Yeah, two for two on the power play. They were one for two. Um, and for, you know, one of the big rubs on the Avalanche is they're not like a physical team. And they're not. They're not. 55 hits the Avs dished out in this game. 55. They had a clear uh, mindset and a clear game plan to this game. And for the most part, it worked, Kyle. For the most part, it worked. Like, God, I, if I can just somehow remove what happened in goal from my brain – um, you really like what the Avalanche did for, for, it, for the majority of this game. They perfectly game plan for Winnipeg, and that comes from get losing all three regular season games against Winnipeg, but you put together the perfect game plan. You just needed average goaltending at best, and it would have been a success, and we would have had a completely different fanfare and stealing one in Winnipeg, the first team in the playoffs to do so so far. Like this is right. this is what you want, and you couldn't even have your the goaltender that's been suspected best going into the playoffs only get worse when the spotlight's on you. So it's it's a right. disappointing thing when you see everything else around goalie and the stats that walked away and the two point nights just sprinkled throughout the roster that are wasted because of a six ninety six save percentage. You mentioned average goaltending. That's uh, what Money Puck uses to uh, present the deserve to winnow meter. Uh, they simulate the game based on everything that happened um, with average goaltending. And 80% of the time in these simulations, the Avalanche win. With all of these stats and everything that, that's presented to them, 80%, it's 80 to 20, the Avalanche deserve to win that game. And, you know, another thing in goal, um, Georgiev only faced one high danger shot. One. Where the Avalanche got, I think, let me bring it up real quick. I think the Avalanche got eight against Hellebuck. Uh, No, I'm lying. Six. Six against Hellebuck. So, I mean, both goalies were were terrible. Yeah. (laughs) You know, Hellebuck gave up six. You know, he was minus 1.17 goals saved above. So he's actually below. And when you look at Georgiev, uh, he gave up those seven 
his goals saved above expected. You want that number to be positive. His number was minus 4.84. If if you don't, if, if if that doesn't compute for you, if you're not one of those people that's into like, you know, like the 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 deep stats and stuff like that, that's as bad as I've seen. Like a lot of the times that number is close to to zero or positive or plus one point something or plus two point something. It is never negative that much, almost negative five. You do not see that number ever. And Alexander, you gave it, just giving it to you. And see, you're talking about all these crazy projections and numbers and simulations. This basically comes down to one to two saves, maybe raising your glove a little bit higher, closing the five hole, one to two saves from where the banner that gives your episode description is we broke Hellebuck. Can you imagine the momentum going into game two, knowing you put six on Hellebuck yeah. and you're, and you have the upper hand, you have the one Oh advantage. You went in as underdogs and Oh, this is classic avalanche hockey. Now the jets are on their heels and yeah. the avalanche have figured out how to beat Hellebuck. And you have all this momentum going through the rest of the series. You're, you're t- looking at a much more optimistic and it doesn't matter what your gift is doing because yes, that's not ideal, but man, this avalanche team can continue to win despite. And one to two saves that your gift let by, we're talking about a loss and all of these incredible offensive and defensive stats wasted because of this terrible, terrible goalie performance. Ooh, and you froze. And I'll continue because you you can't even rely on your backup goalie because he's sick. So you're going to leave him in there for all all seven goals, and he's sitting there, and it's just continually getting worse. And it's not like you could bring him back out because I think your give is done, both mentally and on this team. There is no trust. And if you wheel him back Mm -hmm. out there again, then all the fingers are pointing at Bednar for what are you doing and why. Yeah, and and, I mean, just imagine if you're, you know, any of the forwards. Oh, yeah. any Or even defensemen, like, but mainly like the forwards. Or you're like, dude, like, we just got you six goals in a playoff game against Connor Hallibuck. And, and you know, so I don't know, like, the dynamic there. I, I, we're recording this minutes after the game is over, so I'm really interested to hear, uh, you know, press conference, Jared Bednar, and, and all of them, and, and all of them. So, um, but the last thing I was going to bring up from Natural Statric is they, they, I don't, I can't show it on the screen, but they do heat maps. Mm. Um for all you Halo fans, they they, they have a lot of uh, you know, they, they show where all of the action was. It is so heavily favored in the Avalanche zones, so it's just another thing where all of those things added up. I, I'm gonna say like 99 times out of 100 is a win. Yeah. So, and I and I want to sit here and say like do that again, but it's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be because because yes, Winnipeg is a good defensive team. Uh, and, and they're going to make adjustments to try to make their defense better. Connor Hellebuck is a great goaltender. He's going to make adjustments to make himself better. So this was your 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 best shot um, at, at going up one to nothing in this series. I'm not saying you can't do it again, but you know th- that's the thing with, with with playoff series. It's a game of adjustments. So even though the Jets won this thing, they're not walking out of that arena thinking like, oh, yeah, we stuck it to the abs. They're walking out of the arena saying like, we escaped this thing with one nothing because their goaltender is nowhere near on the level of ours. <laughs> Basically, is how this, what this boils down to. Yeah, no matter how many positive the abs had, you're adding such a big negative. The sum is going to be negative. But that you could get two more saves, like I said, and walk out with a win. The Jets know that and the abs know that. And you don't know what the goalie situation is going to be like, but it cannot get much worse, can it? We'll see, man. We shall see. So um, we we got a few more things to get to with this game. Um, we got some subtext people chiming in, and of course, our sound check, which we have to get to, and we'll do all of that coming up next. 
All right, let's hear from Game Time and the Game Time app. And Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch with killer last minute deals, all in pricing, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying a Major League Baseball tickets so last minute deals you can save up to 60 percent off buying last minute for sports concerts comedy and theater they have those flash deals which we love save even more with exclusive in-app deals and select seats ahead of the game or the event those zone deals is another one save even more on the specific zone when you choose a section and let game time choose the seats for you so go to the game, download the Game Time app, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. So again, create an account and redeem the code LOCKEDONNHL, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All right, let's uh, jump over to some of our subtext people. Um, I have stats here, which I wanted to get. Well, let me do this really quick, too, because I wanted to go through and total up how many people actually scored a point here for the ads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten players with at least a point. Like you said, Kale McCarr with uh, three points. Um, middle stat at a goal, which is nice to see. Uh, Miko with two assists, uh, Lekkonen with one, one, uh, McKinnon with one and one. So you got it really up and down the lineup, up and down the lineup. So you feel again, not, you talk about everything that Winnipeg is known for defense, depth, goaltending. Um, you cracked through that. Yeah. You cracked Even Kivi Ronta had an assist. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right. Subtext people chiming in here. This is from Mark. Um, I love that the apps put up six against that defense in Winnipeg. Uh, one more save by Georgie is, is he just puts it, you know, and then and they had that one goal that just went like post to post. Um, at first, like ESPN did a god awful job of showing replays, like you know, that's a big play, and they showed the one angle five times. You gotta have access to something, and it did go in. It did go in, but it took me like 20 minutes after the goal happened to find somebody who who posted on on a post that I put up, genuinely asking. Someone showed me a, an angle of of this this goal, and someone actually posted it, which I thanked them for because ESPN's not going to do it. How are you that bad at showing replays? Oh, don't worry. They rectified that like literally 20 minutes of game time later when they finally found the footage. They're like, oh, by the yes. way, that that goal. You remember in that last period, is. we found the footage. It's right here. You got to be on that stuff. You hit, like you know people are, are are at the edge of their seat watching these games. You got you got to be so much better than that. They were. I didn't have a problem with how they were announcing the game. I thought that was fine. But th and that's not on the on the announcers. That's on the people in the truck. Do except, better. <laughs> except Bednar was about to be fired in his first season. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> well, there was talk of it. There was talk of it. It wasn't going to happen. I, I don't know how much of it came from within, but I'm not going there right now. That's off-season stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Let's, uh, Kyle. I don't know if this is a joke or not, Kyle. Not you. Uh, he goes, I'm encouraged even with Georgie's play. If he starts game two, it'll be on a very short leash. I don't know what you're... It's, which you're encouraged it, by Kyle. Like uh, there's zero encouragement there for me. Like the only, like I said before, the only reason he gets to start in game two is if Anderson is still sick. Look, you you basically didn't have a goalie and you put six past Hellebuck and you took it down to the wire. So, I mean, if you see Georgie again, I mean, can't be worse and you know how bad it's going to get. So, I mean, there's no encouragement there whatsoever. You know how uh, his Kyle's are. We're crazy. <laughs> um, Heather says Ab started out good with the lead, but they need to keep the momentum going, especially against the Jets. Get the lead and keep it. Uh, there was only one goal Yorgiev let in 
uh, that he had to go from covering his blocker side to his glove side. I'm proud of Miles Wood. I thought Miles Wood played great. Mm-hmm. I thought he played a really good game. Uh, standing up for Kibby Ranta when he was tossed on his back. Best of seven boys. Let's go. Hashtag all in. Um, I wasn't, I didn't even bring up the ref stuff because there's so much more going on. Like, I don't think the refs had a good game either. Um, and yeah, I don't I remember who it was that, that just pretty much uh, went, you know, tripped up Kibby Ranta after the play is over. And, you know, you have Miles Wood coming in to defend him and then they give both guys the, the penalty that st- stuff like that didn't make sense and then the, the 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 goal that did go ping pong um there was a slash against kale mccarr that they didn't call seconds before that happened so that goal shouldn't even have happened um there was and there was stuff on the avalanche that they, they were doing to the jets that they weren't calling either mm-hmm. so i don't want to make this just one way i just thought the refs had a, had a rough rough go of it because you could tell that the abs were getting under the skin of, of the jets with how they were keeping up with them and playing. And I think the jets were maybe feeling like, you know, we, we should be a little bit more in control of this game. This is on our home ice. Last time we played you, we completely demolished you. And I think the jets were getting a little bit frustrated and trying to, and the abs were getting under their skin. So they were kind of gooning it up every once in a while. Um, and you don't need to do it as much as they were doing it, trying to get maybe back under the skin of the avalanche. And sometimes it worked. It felt like the, uh, uh, the referees decided to swallow their whistle, let them play respectful playoff hockey. <clears throat> and after one period, it felt like the referees were like, Oh God, what have we done? We have to get this back in check now yeah. because tensions were getting really, really high. <laughs> they were, they were, uh, Amy, I'm going to resist the urge to write a dissertation about that game. My key takeaways, one, you got to feel optimistic when you put six on Hellebuck. Two, Juice has to start the next game if he's healthy, and we need to play better defense in front of him. Three, the offici- offici- there you go. officiating definitely hurt us in that game, but it's hard to whine about that. And four, the energy, determination, and physicality were all strong. Yeah, I agree with with all of that, I, I I don't and you know she says they got to play better defense in front of him. I I thought they did. I thought they've played better defense, better great yes. defense. No, but uh, better and yes. and you know a, a lot of those I'm I'm still putting on Giorgio. So I concur, Doctor Maselli. Yep. Um, Joe says I don't know what to say about that game. Nobody hangs six on Helly. Uh, and they most certainly don't lose when they do. An absolute embarrassment of a goaltender. He's done. There is no way you allow him to play one more game with this franchise, barring injury. It doesn't matter what happens from here on out. Let Juice have the net and live with the mistakes in net. The forward core was tight. The bottom four D were meh. Uh, I'm worried about the net, but man, if the rest of the team can keep that up, there is a chance in Juice Eustace we trust. I completely concur. That's that's in your gift to the Utah Grizzlies, if I could. <laughs> Or the Utah, <laughs> yeah, Utah Hockey Club, Hockey Club, yeah. Um, Vargar, this has the makings of a seven-game series. I think the Jets will get more frustrating uh, to play against as things move forward. I hate Niederreiter and feel like he scores key goals. I think Nachuskin will be the Avs' best player when it's all said and done. Um, the Jets prove they can win in a high-scoring game. I think Yorgiev gets one more start, but Eustis gets the call. I mean, you know how I think he plays game two. If if you got a healthy in and in, I think you go that route. Or uh, and you locked up, and while you're locking up, I'm glad Vargar called out Niederreiter. I don't think I've ever called him by his just name. There's always other things on top of it. I can't believe he's a member of the Winnipeg you, Jets you, that you, I have to see him I mean, in the playoffs. But yeah, it's I I completely concur there. Yeah. Um, well, what I was saying was I I, I think. Um, if you do go to him for game two, it's just to give him a, like a redemption game. And if it doesn't happen, he's done. But I just feel like this entire season has been a redemption tour for him. Exactly. So what, at what point is, you know, the, you gotta, you gotta just say enough is enough. Yeah. So. It's George of the jungle at this point. He keeps swinging yeah. into the tree and you're anticipating a different outcome and it's just not happening. All right. Last thing to do. That is of course our lockdown avalanche sound check. This is where Colin and I pick. Final epic one uh, song each that we feel best describes the most recent game. And these songs go up on a playlist over on Spotify. Just search for LOA Soundcheck. Volume number three is what these songs go on. 
So what do you got for this one, sir? Game one. A band from Quakerstown, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. They're called Big Handsome. Mm -hmm. Their song, simply called Now What? I'm going to read you just a, a, just a little excerpt. Far away from home, it does appear. Doesn't make a difference to myself. I'll just keep playing off and on. There's nothing as good as it used to be. <laughs> Can't argue with that, man. It's Cannot argue with that. And it, 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 honestly, this is the question of the avalanche. Like, you know what you're... Honestly, we're not saying Eustace is going to come in and play Patrick Wall levels. No, not at all. You know the caliber of your goalie position. What did the Avalanche do from here on out on how they play? You know your game plan against Winnipeg. You got to find something a step up to compensate for your goalie play. If that's bringing back the defense a little bit, I don't know what it is, but there has to be an answer here because it's not going to get better in net. It's only going to get maybe a step better, but it's mm -hmm. not going to get to the level that you're playing against. Yeah. Uh, for me, I, the last uh, sound check we had for, for the uh, Oilers game, the new Pearl Jam album had just dropped. And I'm just, I told you before we hit record, I might just do Pearl Jam for the entirety of the playoffs. And why not? I mean, they got like 30 years of, of uh, albums to go off of. I'm sure I could find one for every uh, every game in these playoffs. Um and, and, and this one definitely fits the bill for this game. This is off the No Code album, which, by the way, is maybe the best al CD like inserts and, oh. and uh, packaging ever. So if you can get your hand, I don't know if the vinyl is the same way, but if you can get your hands on like the No Code CD, all of like the, the, the uh, lyrics and stuff are on like uh, Polaroids. So oh. there's like, there's like 15 Polaroids in there. There's one of each of the band, and on each individual Polaroid is all the lyrics from every song. It's awesome. it's beautifully done, beautifully done. Um, but this song is called "Who You Are." That is for this season. This is who he is, and Alexander Georgiev. And for me to get to this point, we've come a long way for me to get to this point because I backed him all of this year. Um, but it's just gotten progressively worse. And to put up that performance when you got to step the game up a little bit was not there. So I, I just feel like this is who he is. It's who you are. And I don't think the Avalanche can can go another game with him right now. And, and, that, and that that is putting so much weight on a rookie with about a dozen games under his belt. But you ha just have to ask yourself, like you said, he's not – the Patrick Wah that you're expecting to come in, but is he the better option right now? I think the answer to that is just a massive yes. The The answer is you hope so, because honestly, this could end up being the biggest, what could have been avalanche season of all time. If you could have had average goalie play, what could have been with this season when it's all said and done? It's a good point. It's so true. So, all right. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. We're going to break down this more. We'll hear what players and, and coaches had to say and see if there's some things there that we can pull out of it and what, what to expect for game two. Until then, uh, we'll uh, have to just wait and, and see. But we don't have to wait too long because you got one day off and right back to game two. So, uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you for tuning in, making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. He's Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli, and this is the Locked On Avalanche podcast. It's only game one. Can the Avs do this? Uh, yeah, I think that it's, if they get some goalie play, definitely could happen. We'll see you guys tomorrow.